Over here. Ah! Oh, you scared Paimon! How'd you appear out of nowhere like that? Oh? You scare so easily now? Is there something worrying you these days? You little... The only thing we're worried about was trying to find you! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come over here and keep it down. until Paimon told them everything, and then Paimon woke up. Hey, come on! It's just a dream, okay? Paimon wouldn't really squeal. Maybe. Hey, lazy bones. What are you still doing here? If you don't want to starve, then get yourselves over to the production zone. You must be the catch of the day. Looks like you've got some luck getting assigned this space. Yep, we just arrived yesterday and... Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking! Yes, sir. Listen carefully to my instructions. I don't want any mishaps. Every machine here is worth more than the both of you. Working around these machines can be very dangerous. Do your job well, and you can eat in the cafeteria after your shift. Get sloppy and you dine in the infirmary. Anyway, the Fortress of Merope doesn't want to lose a single one of its machines. And it also doesn't want to waste the production potential of any inmate. You got that? Got it! Your job is to use the machine over there to process widgets. Watch carefully, and make sure you step on the pedal at the right time. If the machine gets jammed, then give it a little maintenance with your fist. Here, take this. Bring me the process widgets, and I'll give you some credit coupons in exchange. Once the widget is hot enough to glow, jump to step on the pedal and hit the widget! 
So if the machine gets jammed, you just need to attack it to fix the problem. This one is... tolerable. Though, since the processing is done by machine, the product is all pretty much the same anyway. Alright, I'll pass you for now. And we'll count up how many credit coupons you've earned. <sighs> I'm exhausted. We're done now, right? Oh, that foreman. He's so scary that Paimon couldn't even speak. Ugh. Even though Paimon's starving and wants to head straight to the coupon cafeteria, we still need to meet Lenny first, right? He probably just finished up his work, too. He should be around here somewhere. Over here. Ah! Oh, you scared Paimon! How'd you appear out of nowhere like that? 
Oh? You scare so easily now? Is there something worrying you these days? You little... The only thing we're worried about was trying to find you! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come over here and keep it down. Oh, Lynette! You're here too! You two really are inseparable. That's right. My brother simply can't stand to be away from me. Uh, it's not just Lynette. Fremenet is also here. Do you still remember him? Oh, you mean that diver from the House of the Hearth, right? Pyro remembers seeing him in the Court of Fontaine before. Now hurry up and tell us, how did you end up as criminals this time? We fought so hard at court to prove you were innocent, but now it looks like our incredible court battle was for nothing! Sadly, even the teeniest of things can land you in prison these days. I put together a street performance and used the popularity we gained from the Opera House incident to attract a big crowd. And then? Next, I invited several audience members to participate in the show. And then, with the entire audience watching, their wallet suddenly disappeared. My brother was charged with theft, and I was charged as his accomplice, having assisted him in his crime. It really isn't that bad. The missing wallets are all in the leftmost drawer of the Maison Guardianage's big filing cabinet. We just need to see how long it takes to discover them. Yep, we should be released then. In terms of the magic trick itself, I think the performance went perfectly. <sighs> Leave it to Lenny to magic himself into prison. Indeed. Last time I hid my identity from you, I promised that I'd tell you absolutely everything if you were angry about it. No more secrets. So I don't plan on keeping anything from you this time either. At the moment, the House of the Hearth's interests don't conflict with yours at all. We were instructed by the father of our house, the Knave, to come here and conduct an investigation. <gasps> Told you so! See? Paimon guessed right! As for what we're investigating, Perhaps you haven't heard, but the Fortress of Meropede hides a secret. Some even say that the entire fortress exists just to protect it. The House of the Hearth has been investigating this for a very long time, trying to uncover its mysteries. But recently, all of our informants, including the ones that had infiltrated the guards, suddenly vanished and have not been heard from since. We believe that this is a direct provocation, and it's the reason why we came here. Father has somehow managed to confirm that Fossilors does not have Fontaine's Gnosis. Huh? How did she manage to learn information that important? Father has her ways. Many of them are beyond our imagination, and we've never had the chance to see her at work. But we trust her conclusions. It was this information that led us to suspect that Fontaine's Gnosis might be in the Fortress of Meripede and is related to that secret. So it's all about the Gnosis again. Well, that's about it from our side. How about you two? Did Monsieur Nervulet send you here? Bingo! The Nave has been applying a lot of pressure. She wants to know what happened to Child, so we came here to investigate. Uh, Traveler, are we allowed to tell them? <laughs> you don't need to worry too much about that. She's just asking for a report on Master Child's predicament as a means of pressuring you. Father used this situation as a pretext to negotiate with two high-ranking officials in the Court of Fontaine. She actually just wants to be able to make concessions on this matter for gains elsewhere. Almost like a bargaining chip. Sometimes you need an excuse to do things you otherwise couldn't. And a harbinger is more valuable than you might imagine. Of course, it's not a complete farce. If we do manage to find out what happened to Master Child too, then diplomatic relations with Fontaine could improve, and Snezhnaya might even be able to adjust its stance a bit. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like we're the only ones who actually care about Child's situation? The relationship between the Harbingers must be as bad as ever. I wouldn't go that far. Father just has different standards than we do when it comes to what can be sacrificed for an advantage. Uh, by the way, 
I have a suggestion. Why don't we team up? Even though we have different objectives, we're both here to investigate the Fortress of Meripede. It would be more efficient for us to work together. As you know, the House of the Hearth has many reasons to seek the Gnosis, but our highest priority remains resolving the prophesied crisis. You can trust us on that. <laughs> See, I told you. Is that so? Hmm. Sure enough, it won't be easy to convince them to cooperate with us. Lenny seems to be thinking pretty hard about something. Of course he is. Lenny has been looking forward to a chance to reach an understanding with you ever since last we met. Or, I should say, we were really looking forward to teaming up with you this time. Lynette, just tell them everything, why don't you? It's okay to open up a little. <laughs> Very prudent of you, and consistent with your behavior since we first met. That's reasonable enough, and I agreed to cooperate on these terms as well. I was prepared for the worst, but you were actually more agreeable than I anticipated. <laughs> All right then, there's no time to lose. I have some information to share, so listen carefully. Since Lynette and I arrived here, our investigation uncovered the fact that the Fortress of Meripede has a forbidden zone. Most people just clammed up and wouldn't talk, but after asking the right questions, we were able to confirm the existence of the Forbidden Zone from the guards. You should be aware of that while you're investigating. A Forbidden Zone? Oh, could that be where the child disappeared to? You're right, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Good. That's the most suspicious thing about the fortress that we know of so far. We have a few other unanswered questions, and we'll be investigating those as quickly as we can. Anyway, I hope you find our information useful at least. Oh, look at the time. You two must be hungry. You should go to the coupon cafeteria and get something to eat. I'll use my cards to get in touch with you again in the future. Oh, that's just what Paimon wanted to hear! Paimon's starving after all that work today. We can talk more about the investigation later. Let's go get some grub! being kind of mean and the work being pretty tiring. You think so, mate? <laughs> if I had a coupon for every fish who said that. Seems you fishies still haven't learned your lessons from your life up on the surface. If you take things at face value, then by the time you reach a dead end, you won't even know how you ended up on that road in the first place. <laughs> I like your attitude. I can, uh, let you in on a little something. Everyone's been telling you to just follow the rules and not cause any trouble for yourself. Am I right? But what they don't tell you is that the rules aren't exactly what they pretend to be. The rules for being a prisoner. The truth is, this place has a lot of hidden rules. Huh? Hidden rules? What do you mean? Not everyone knows about those rules, but whether you know them or not, once you break one, you might encounter something even worse than death. Really? Oh, now you're really scaring poor Paimon. Don't joke around like that! Of course. And I'd say that just disappearing would be one of the better outcomes. Oh, you mean that if there really are hidden rules, then Child's disappearance might have something to do with it? Uh, 
In that case, would you tell us some hidden rules? We definitely want to avoid breaking them. <laughs> Come on, mate. This is valuable information. The difference between life and death. Do you really think you can just ask and I would tell you? Paimon understands, but we don't have many credit coupons yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not like I'm going anywhere. Just come talk to me after you've saved enough. Moreover, your new fish, freshly caught and completely out of your element. What'd be the point in even telling you anything before you've gotten a handle on your new lives? Come and find me once you've been here longer. I'm usually around the rag and bone shop. Just call me V-Doc. Bye bye now. He left. Just like that. Huh. Do you think he's just trying to scare us into buying fake information from him? Yeah. It might be a good place to start in our investigation. Hidden rules, huh? But, like he said, we don't have any coupons and we're still not familiar with this place. Oh, there's nothing we can do about it now. Ah, we were so busy talking we almost forgot to eat. Even if it's not the best, it's probably better while it's warm. Come on, dig in before it gets cold. that our shift is set for every morning and we're free to do whatever we want all afternoon. But it seems like most of the other inmates choose to continue working through the afternoon to earn more credit coupons. Oh, and they also said that you can use coupons to skip work in the morning and free up your time. They weren't kidding. Credit coupons really can be used to do anything here. Ah, I'm so tired. And we'll need to wake up and go to work in the morning. Without any credit coupons, it's not like we can really do anything else. Hmm. Nighty night, Traveler. Paimon hopes we can keep making progress on our investigation tomorrow. An ordinary dream? Oh, child's vision! So you had it with you this whole time? Maybe the vision connected child's consciousness to yours! And our investigation has its first major breakthrough! Good thing you brought the vision with you here! So what did you see in the dream? Do you know where child went? Huh. Okay. 
Well, hopefully it'll be a bit more helpful in the future. What's more important now is that it's the start of another new day as prisoners! Let's do our best to earn more credit coupons! What's the plan for today? Let's go! It's time to start working! If that guard fielding catches us skulking about, he's sure to give us an earful! <laughs> Look who decided to show up! Get your butts in gear and get to work! Time's a wasted. Good, here you go. Remember to give me the widget once you've finished processing it. Hello, shift mates. I saw you finished your work, so I thought I'd come over and say hi. Oh, hey there! We've seen you before. Your assigned workspace is really close, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. The name's Rowan. This past few days, I couldn't help but notice the new faces working nearby. I guess we were destined to meet. I've been working here for almost 15 years. Even the foreman, Grainville, always calls me chief. Whoa, you've been working here a long time, Chief! <laughs> if there's anything you'd like to know, just ask me. I know the work here in the production zone better than the back of my hand. Alright, Chief. We'll be sure to come to you first. <sighs> Did you just ask about... the rules? <laughs> Pretty sharp for newcomers. You've already heard about the rules, huh? Who'd you hear it from? Hmm. All right. Seeing as I'm the one who came over here, you're already calling me Chief. I guess I can tell you a little. Truth is, you two keep working like this, you might be putting yourselves in danger. Huh? Wait, there's even a rule about that? What would have happened if you never told us about this? Well, it's usually not that easy to break one on accident. The conditions of the hidden rules are usually pretty specific. But once you do break one, bad things happen. If you work continuously in the production zone for three days, and if all you do besides eating and sleeping is just work, then something bad will happen during lunch on the third day. Huh? Like what? Oh, don't scare Paimon! <laughs> if I knew that, then I wouldn't be standing here talking to you, now would I? You mean, even you have never tried working three days like that before? There's actually a legend about this rule. They say that there was a worker who worked way harder than me. He was both efficient and eager on the job, and most other workers couldn't hold a candle to him. One time, he tried to test his limits and worked as long as he could. Then during lunch on the third day, he disappeared into thin air, as if he'd evaporated. Later, some people went and asked some of his past friends about him, but they said, never heard of the guy. Unfortunately, we were assigned different production zones. I never saw for myself what he looked like. Wait, are you thinking that it was... Huh? Oh? You... <sighs> Listen, kid. This ain't the kind of thing you should be curious about. Let me tell you, you're better off forgetting about it and looking after yourself. Now I kind of regret ever telling you. Yeah, I agree with Chief here. Do you really want to try? Uh, all right, if you insist. 